As quilters, as much as we love to quilt, sometimes there's a quilt we stay away from for one reason or another. And I was a bit hesitant about this quilt. Remember the color dive quilt? Oh my goodness, it's absolutely beautiful with all those charm squares and then using the half square triangles to create that massive chevron. It's a beauty but it's over 80 inches square, and that's a lot of quilt to quilt. So I was a bit hesitant about how to proceed. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and I have a solution for you. Do you have a big quilt? You want to make a big quilt, but you're not sure how to square it up or how to quilt it. What if I could show you a way to use your walking foot to quilt this easily and faster? You're going to love it. We'll get it squared up. I'm going to show you how to do that. We'll get this quilt going, and before you know it, you're going to have a finished quilt that you absolutely love. So let's go. I'm ready to show you how to do this. In the past, I've been able to do free motion quilting. I messed up my needle. It won't do free motion quilting anymore because I bent the shaft. Now, I'm going to be going on a road trip in the very near future, and this baby is going to go into the shop and, and get the full spa treatment. And so when I come home, she and I are going to be able to do magic together, and I can't wait for that. Now, this is a 2002, yes, that's a 2002, not a 22, machine. So she's been around a good while and has served me well. And I expect to get some more time out of her. But right now, um, the challenges are tight spaces and maneuverability of a large piece of fabric, or in this case, a quilt sandwich. So I have a plan of how I'm going to tackle this. One of the easiest ways is just to line your needle up your presser foot on one side or the other of a seam and sew straight and just go from top to bottom. And I've done that. Actually, I've done that on a previous quilt with half square triangles. And I'll, I'll go ahead and link that above. It was concentric squares and it worked great, but it was only like maybe 60 inches square. It wasn't a huge quilt. Now, dealing with an extra, you know, 20 inches on each side is a maneuverable challenge and or a maneuverable a maneuverable ability <laughs> i can't say it but whatever it is it's a challenge and so i thought a, a curvy line would be best and i've done that before how about i show another video of that because that's something that's really easy to do going from corner to corner you start in the corner of your quilt and you work to the opposite corner and it's wonderful, but again, this is bigger, and it's going to take a little more, uh, I'm not going to try and say that word again, a little more agility on my part. So what I thought I would do initially is I thought I would just do a swirl down the seam, because then it's sort of, it's in a good strong place. The seam has the um, extra support of the stitching as well as the couple layers of fabric folded on top of each other and that just sort of makes me feel good because it it's going to hold the quilting together and less apt to stretch and pull while I'm sewing as well as while it's in use. Now the situation when you do the curved stitches is going through the corners now, generally, just for a four square like this, a four patch, that's not too bad. But this is a half square triangle, and there are going to be places where I have a lot more coming together. So this is going to be very thick and may be difficult to sew through. I am using a size 11 needle, which should be adequate um, to quilt with. If you're dealing with real heavy fabrics or particularly a thick quilt sandwich, you might want to go to a 14 or even a 16. That heavier needle can give you that little more oomph that you need to get through whatever you're working with. So what I've decided is I'm going to do a curved stitch, but I'm going to go around these and not through them. So I'll come around this way. So basically it's going to be an elongated S. And when I start up here, I'm going to start a little bit off of the, the seam. And so I'll come around like this 
and kind of go that way, I think. But once I get started, this will sort of flow into place. I'll, I'll get into a rhythm and then everything is going to work well. So you can see that I have my walking foot and I do not quilt without them, uh, without it, because it is such an, a, uh, it, it's just a wonderful tool that just helps bring this top fabric along. So as the feed dogs underneath are working to pull the back of the quilt, or the bottom of the quilt, whatever way you like to look at it, this has feed dogs on top that's also pulling this fabric. So it's alleviating a lot of stress on your hands because it's helping move things along. All you have to do is, you know, keep the fabric moving here. And on that note, what we need to talk about is what do we do with all this fabric on this side? I'm starting in the middle. I'm going to go down the middle then I'm going to come back up and go down the next seam. I'm not going to try and turn this around, but I'm going to work from the middle to the edge. So what I've done here is I have rolled this up, as you can see, so I can unroll it as I'm moving along. And every row that I quilt is going to be one row closer to getting to the end. And there are, oh my goodness, I think nine blocks. So there's what, eight different seams that I'm going to have to go down to get to that end. So I'm going to need every bit of encouragement that I can. So um, this, this is a big tall task for me. I haven't done a quilt this big on my machine in many years, simply because I haven't been in a space that I've been able to spread out and do it essentially. And I'm getting to a place now that I think it's going to work better for me and therefore I'm going for it. I know I'm talking a lot and I'm stalling is what I'm doing. <laughs> so let me go ahead and we'll just get started. You can watch how I do the first few stitches and then I will sort of talk you through a bit about what I'm doing. So I've got my thread in place. I'm not going to worry about pulling up my bottom thread because I'm starting off the quilt and I'm going to start about an inch out. So I'm, I'm going to sort of do that offset curve that I'm talking about and starting off the edge will kind of help me come in where I want to be. Now everything is, uh, spray basted so my quilt is had held together with the adhesive which is fabulous because now I don't have the pins to worry about safety pins you not only have to put them in you have to take them out they leave holes in the fabric and they're cumbersome to uh to quilt with so I'm I'm sold on the spray basting and again I'll put that quilt that uh video up above okay I can't think of anything else to uh, stall the starting moment with. So here we go. With my hands on each side, I'm pulling, not pulling, but holding all the layers taut so I have a nice smooth area. There we go. So I'm going to work across the seam And when I stop, I try and stop in the seam itself. My plan is to do this S-curve and go more or less through the center. So I've come around already on this side and I've reached the seam. I always want to try and stop in the seam. It's not always possible. Um, it's just, you know, depends on where you are, but it does make it easier to start and go and less visible if you make a little jog in your stitching. Now, as I come around, I'm going to go around this uh, four patch where these seams come together because that's really thick to sew through. And that's just going to um, be more of a challenge. And over time, your hands are going to get tired, you know, dealing with these heavier spots. Um, the gloves are great to work your fabric, but they're also a little bit supportive for your hands which I appreciate. So I'm going to come down here and I'll come through this way. And then when I come to this section, I'm just going to go across. I'm not coming out quite as wide as I'm showing with my finger. But let me go ahead and uh, do a bit of this. As I'm sewing, 
and quilting, I keep this hand bundled around this roll that I have going. Now it does two things. It keeps me able to manage where all this is going and I'm controlling the movement of this. I'm able to keep my fabric taut just by keeping my hand here but letting this finger thumb kind of work its, its magic what it needs to do here in this hand. So once you find your comfortable position it's going to be a lot easier. The other thing, don't hunch your shoulders. Don't lean over and put your nose right up to your needle. Sit back, put your shoulders back. It's going to help you stay relaxed and it's going to go much better for you. So let's go ahead and get started here. There we go. Now, I don't know, you probably can't see this, but as I'm sewing, I'm going to see if I can move my camera just a little bit without messing things up too much. I keep my arm right here, and as I'm moving, I let my arm rest on the quilt, so it's all sh also kind of pulling it along the way, and it just helps keep everything moving at a nice, even pace. So I've come around this way and now I'm going to go across over here and part of the reason why I'm stopping is to allow me to adjust the quilt in the direction I'm going that way there's I don't want to move it too much while I'm stitching because that way the needle can jump back and forth and not stay where it's supposed to be So when I get to the seam, I'm about a half inch away from the seam. So I'm not making a huge um, S curve. Just enough, sorry, every time I move this, I may be bumping that camera, I apologize. Um, it's just enough to kind of keep away from the seam, but add a little bit of interest in the quilting line. And again, it's just so much easier to do this than try and do a straight line. I think because a straight line is going to be tough to maneuver the quilt. I don't know. Try it and see what you think. But for me, this is working out I, better than I expected. Now this is one of those spots where I said going through these seams um, straight on would be challenging because we have six pieces of fabric all sewn together and that would be a tough one. Now let's just spin this around. I think we'll be able to see some of this. And it's not really showing up, but I came in just this little curve here. Does that show up? Yeah, you can't really see this on the camera. The stitching doesn't show up very well. You can kind of see that I'm not too far from the edge there. And I'm just going to go ahead at this point. You kind of see what I'm working on, how I'm doing this. And I'll go through this whole seam from top to bottom, all 80 inches of it. And then um, I'll come back and we'll do some close-ups and take a look at how it's going. I am so excited to tell you this was way easier than I expected. I really had been putting this off, and it was about the size. And like I said, I've quilted big quilts before, but I had free motion, and I had more maneuverability, and I was afraid that just going from one end of the quilt to the other over 80 inches would really be far more difficult than it is. The curve makes a big difference because it's much easier to work with and we'll just kind of look through this as I'm talking and you'll notice it, it crosses in different places so it's not consistent throughout the uh, the entire length and that's okay because then it's just going to be a nice long s-curve throughout the quilt 
and the next row I will intentionally start in a different spot so whoops sorry I'm moving the quilt and bumping the camera so that I'm not always you know going to be right here I may have this curve go a little bit differently and like I said that's about getting the the um what's the word the the method the motion the uh muscle memory whatever way that that works for you and it just sort of helps to get you into a rhythm i think that's the word i'm looking for is you get into a rhythm you get through this first row and you realize yay i can do it <laughs> and so then we just keep moving on so i'm going to do that now and i'm going to go in the same direction see i'm thinking i might want to go this way and i just i'm not going to do that yet i am going to start here and i'm going to let me see i want to bring this across see how this comes across down here i want to bring this one across up here that way my curves aren't going to be exactly the same so that's going to be easy to do so i'm going to aim for the middle of this flower and we'll just kind of work from here and i'm going to go slow so you can watch what i'm doing And so you see, I've got my hand here and here. I'm holding everything in place as well as guiding. So I don't want to push down hard because the fabric is being drawn by the feed dogs top and bottom. I just want to keep everything taut so that I'm not going to get wrinkles or tucks on the back. Now that this seam, uh, this quilting line is laid in, these layers over here are all secured really well with that seam line so fabric's not going to be shifting so all i want to do is just sort of keep my hands here so that i can guide where i'm going I'm watching the other side trying not to follow exactly that same line I need to make sure I go correctly here um, but it's just sort of going the way it's going sorry I keep hitting the camera my apologies now you see how I took this one wider and then it's going to be going down farther and that's just sort of um, the method I'm using to kind of keep things changing but I'll tell you it's <laughs> you really don't have to um, work too hard to keep it changing because as you go you're going to be moving the quilt a bit differently but see on this seam where that curve falls right there on this seam I'm going to have it come out more up here and that way I just don't have these parallels because there's no way I can keep them perfect. And rather than try and do that, I want to intentionally make sure they're not. And the first couple rows will kind of break me in so that I can get, get my rhythm going and we'll be good to go. One other point I want to mention is in order for your quilt to feed through well, as you're placing the quilt in your lap, put the end of the quilt down first and then just sort of fan fold the quilt on top. That way, as you're quilting along, it's just pulling off the top and you don't have to, you know, pull and shuffle too much along the way. Uh, it's working really well for me. Not unlike how this is here, but where this I have rolled, I'll unroll it. In my lap, I just kind of fold it back and forth so it pulls up as I'm moving along. Row two is finished, and I have all the confidence now. I just needed to get through that little bit, so I, I encourage you to give it a try as well. And, you know, just look, it, it looks great. We've got some just nice long S-curves, and the quilt's moving fantastically well. Look at that. Everything's just 
right where it needs to be. So just kind of, you know, work your way into a pattern that you're comfortable with. If it's easier to take a wider curve, then go ahead and do that. Or if you like taking just, you know, a real narrow and, and maybe half that distance, that works too. And you can mix it up throughout because there is no right or wrong. This is just a, a free motion walking foot, essentially. We're just letting it, it go the way that uh, it's going to fall. And it'll be awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this end. When I get to the far side, I will uh, get back with you and show you how this half of the quilt looks. With the quilting all done, I just want to show you how pretty this looks. I mean, it's just, it's easy, and it's sort of delicate, and it gives us a, a nice flowing line in contrast with all the squares, which I think kind of soften things up. And I did it in a variegated green, like an olive green, because there's lots of greens and blues and turquoise. And, and it works well in the yellows as well. So I'm really happy with how this has turned out. Right now, I'm getting ready to trim the edges in order to square up the quilt. So as we turn it around, you will you can see other areas where it's quilted. But this is essentially what it is along all the uh, straight lines in one direction. You can certainly come back and go the other way. One thing to think about when you're quilting is look at your batting and see how close together you need to quilt. Generally, the rule of thumb is your palm. This batting actually is good for up to eight inches. So I could, you know, come almost the full distance of these two squares, which is quite a bit. I like to follow a seam and that, that works for me. I think that is easier to manage and keep me on track with where I'm going. But depending on the batting that you're using, there may be certain restrictions that, you know, you have to keep it closer together. And, you know, just because it allows up to eight inches doesn't mean that's how far you have to be. You can, you know, do whatever you want. You can come in here and, and do some more. But this is good. I know it's going to keep everything nice and tidy. I love all the fabrics, and I'm just, you know, I'm very happy with how this has turned out. But now it's time to get the binding on, and I need to square this quilt up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll work on one side at a time and show you how I do that. So give me one moment, and I'll get things set up for that. Recently, I did a quilt. Actually, it's the companion quilt to this, this one. It has a lot of the same fabrics. It's just a smaller lap size. And... I showed you how to square it up going from the center out, and it was a 60-inch quilt. With this being 80 inches, we can still do it the same way, but there are a few things that need to be different. So the first thing you want to do is lay your, your quilt out and get it, you know, as straight as you can, given whatever space you have. And you want to make sure you're in the center. So right here, I'm in the center. Now, sometimes when you're putting your quilt down, you notice these lines can be wavy. Your edge can be wavy. And if I were to put this ruler down, you know, I'd have pieces that are poking up and over here pieces that are under the ruler. And I'm going to show you how we're going to work with that. On a smaller quilt, you can just put your ruler here and let your ruler run off and line up with the grid. Since this is 80 inches, I can't do that. I have to rely strictly on the quilt in order to measure it. And that's what I'm going to show you. Now, you absolutely can use a smaller ruler. This is a 24 inch, but because I have the larger mat, I'm going to use my larger ruler. And that is helpful because then I get more overlap as I'm quilting, or excuse me, as I'm cutting across the middle, then this is 36 inches. So, you know, this is almost half the size of the quilt. So I'll only have about a quarter on each side and I'll get this center nice and square. So the first thing is you want to lay this out. And before you do anything, check underneath and make sure the rest of the quilt is over here. So I have it bundled up right here in front of me on the edge of the cutting table. 
And so I make sure that the backing is pulled out like this. Let me get my ruler. And get it nice and straight so I don't have any wrinkles or folds or tucks or anything. Okay, let's pull this closer. So as you're, you're putting your, your quilt top down, this can waver. And it's simply because of the way the fabric is falling, the way it's being pulled. If I put my ruler right here, well, we got lucky. Look at that. That's nice and straight. But let me show you. If I were to pull this this here, you know, pull some of these edges, let's say, you know, it was sort of going every which way, and you get this piece that sticks above. So this is straight, and this is straight, but this pokes above. Just pull it down. We want to cut these edges straight. The idea is not to cut the quilt top. We just want to trim those edges so they're nice and even. We can pull this down because this is where we quilted it. We know this is the edge of the quilt that we want. And I'm just going to line this up on both ends right here and come across and check. I have a little bit poking through there. Now, the other reason I'm being particularly cautious not to cut up too much is I have half square triangles and there's a quarter inch seam allowance that I really need to have. So if I'm cutting off too much, then I'm going to lose my points. Now I do want to show you with a smaller ruler that you can pretty much do the same with this. You're just going to have to place it more times across your quilt to get there. But you would do the same thing. You would just put your ruler from here to here and make sure everything lines up and then cut it and then you're going to move it over just like I'm going to do with this particular um, size ruler that I'm working with. I'm actually going to pull this a little closer because I can't quite reach that far and we're going to go from here to here and with my edges nice and straight with the ruler I'm going to cut from one side to the other and I go all the way to the end of the ruler and I just go right through. And if it's easier, just cut that so it's out of your way. Okay, so now we'll come to this side. And again, we want to make sure that nothing here is going to be underneath where we're cutting. The last thing we want to do at this point is cut our quilt. We put too much work into it. Okay, so let's pull this this way and lay things out so let me show you so if i was using my small ruler what i would do is i would put my ruler i want to overlap probably by about at least six inches because that gets my ruler on a nice straight edge alternatively you can put your quilt on the there we go on the grid line and line it up that way but you can see that even if I do that I don't have a grid line over here to measure with so I'm still measuring from my quilt okay and when I say measuring I mean you know getting the straight line so if I go from here bring that down that's here and there's just this little bit right here that doesn't want to stay Okay, so you see how that's all nice and straight? I'll go ahead and cut it since I have it right where I want it to be. And we're just going to go to the end. And then let's go right off the edge and finish this. Okay, and I'm checking to make sure there's nothing under there. I don't want to cut off my quilt. Now, what I'm going to do is just, let's see right here, I'm going to cut that off because I want to show you. We're going to line the quilt up with this line here, just like that. And I want to be able to get my ruler off on the grid over here. So I'm going to line my ruler up with one of the seams. And I'm going to run this across that straight edge, just like this. All right, now I need to make sure this quilt 
edge is in line there with that line. Okay, so you see what I've done? My quilt lines up with the grid line. My ruler is right on top. I have my ruler on the straight edge of the seam so I know everything is nice and square. And then I'm just going to cut this off. Whoops, did I miss something? There we go. Just like that. Okay, so now we have a square edge to start with. And then I will be ready to come in once I finish the other half. And we'll go around the corners. But each side I'm going to start in the center. It just, I think, is a better way to go. If you start on the edges, I just... I'm just afraid that it'll stretch out. It might go the wrong way. I just, I like working out of the center. It's just been very successful for me. So that's just where I am. So here I am back with my long ruler. And what I want to show you is you may not be able to see it, but this fabric, instead of coming up over the ruler, is coming down under the ruler. So we're going to do the same thing, but opposite. So these edges line up. I'm going to pull this just a bit to line it up because I don't want to have just batting and backing when I'm doing my binding. I want to make sure the quilt is in there too so I get a nice edge when I'm sewing. Okay, I'm on my corner and I'm on my corner. I'm really not even going to worry about the grid at this point because it's about the quilt and I feel very confident that this is nice and straight. And there we are. So we have one straight edge completely done across the quilt. And that's an 80 inch quilt. So you can see how manageable it is if you cut it down into smaller pieces. Start in the center and work out to the sides. And that's going to make it much simpler and more accurate for you. And now it's time to get this quilt finished. I'm going to put the binding on and that'll be it. It'll be ready to go. And I cut my two and a half inch binding. I sewed my strips together with the bias seam so that I get this nice diagonal. And then when I fold this over, I have a uh, spread out seam as opposed to having just a straight seam all that falls in the same place if I were to do just a you know end to end. So I'm going to start in the middle of one of my sides and I'm going to fold my binding over and I'm going to leave about an 8 to 10 inch length. I like having more than less simply because when I go to join my binding, I need to give myself enough room to turn it so I can do the bias uh, seam at the end. So I'm going to put my edge, I fold it in half, and I put my edge right to the edge of my quilt. And I'm going to sew right at my quarter seam, my quarter inch. And I'll just start, let me get my thread, it's kind of tucked underneath there. There we are. And as I go, I make sure that my binding is taut. I don't pull it or stretch it, but I make sure it's laying flat and doesn't have any, any loose bits there. Because if this binding gets loose, it's really hard to flip it over and sew it to the quilt because essentially there's more binding than there is quilt. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this. And what I'll do is I'll sew as far as I can. And then I'll stop and reset my binding and go from there. Now, I know a lot of folks will either pin their binding or uh, clip it to the quilt before sewing. And I appreciate that, but for me, The way I figure is I'm going to be, you know, folding and sewing as I go. If I do it ahead of time, I don't know that I'm saving myself any time. Because I'm essentially doing the same thing. It's just about when I'm doing it. And rather than go through and, you know, put everything together, 
uh, ahead of time and then come through. And so, I don't know, I guess I have a problem with pins stabbing me and clips falling out when I'm sewing. So I just don't worry about a lot of that. I just do it as I go. And like I said, sort of old school, this is the way I've always done it and it works great for me. So let me go ahead and uh, I'll get down to the first corner. I'll show you how we turn a corner. And from there, I'll just go ahead and get this quilt finished. Once I'm ready to turn the binding over and fold it to the other side, then I'll show you how I do that part as well. All right, here we go. Here I am at my first corner and look at this. I have a seam. I didn't even think. If, if you don't want to deal with the seams at the corners, then go ahead and, you know, just sort of pre-measure and place your binding, begin it where it'll either have the seam before or after the corner. And I just sat down and started sewing and didn't even think about it. So what I'm going to do is just as I was going along, I'm going to just uh, fold my seam allowance towards me so it's in the direction that I'm sewing and I don't have to worry about anything flipping around or you know creating lumps and bumps and I'm going to sew within a quarter inch of the end of the quilt and that's going to be right here to that green so I'm going to sew right to there and then I'll stop cut my thread and you can see that I left that quarter inch piece right there. Now I'm going to turn my quilt, or at least the corner. This is a large quilt. It's just over 80 inches. So um, I maneuver it as I go. I don't turn the whole thing until I'm ready to really, you know, go around another whole area that requires me to do so. So again, I don't know if I mentioned, but I do finger press that seam as I'm folding. Now, whether you have a seam or not, this is the way you do it. The fact is when you have a seam, it's going to be a little bit thicker. So you're going to want to really be um, certain about getting that finger pressing in to uh, line everything up well. So I, with my folded binding, I pull it straight up so it's in line with the quilt edge. And then I'm going to put my finger right here at the edge of the quilt so when I pull this down, oops, right here, it's, it's even, I want it to go just the littlest bit beyond. And that's going to help my miter corner fold around and encompass all that fabric. So it just makes things work a little more smoothly. Now I'm going to make sure that I have my sides close together and my seam right along the edge and we've got that it i didn't get that completely straight so there's a little bit of that poking out but that's okay it's going to be on the inside of the seam now the other thing i want to do is make sure that this is nice and straight so i'm just going to make sure that that's all in place and that those folds line up there's a little bit protruding past, and now I'm good to go. And so I'm just going to start right here. Actually, let me move over just a little bit. And I start off the fold and sew onto it. That way I know I get through all those layers. And from here, I'm just going to continue laying my binding down. Tuck that little bit in, and we're off. So now I'll go through and I will come back around and meet up with you when we go to uh, close up and, and join the, the binding at the end. I've come all the way around and now I need to attach my binding strips together. So what I'm going to do, I, I stop with about, I probably have at least a good 10 inches here between the, uh, the pieces or the between where I sewed, starting and stopping. And I'm going to come to the middle point and I'm going to pull the camera out just a bit. That's better. Now we can see what's going on. So I have my beginning here and my ending here. 
and I want to overlap them somewhere in the middle. So this is the piece that I started with, and this is where I end. And I'm okay right there. That's sort of in the mid-range. I'm going to go ahead and lay my binding along the edge of my quilt, and then I'm going to take this piece and lay it on top. Now, there are a couple ways you can do this measurement. The easiest way and the surefire way is to take the loose end and lay it on your binding. If you put it from where you are starting to where you're ending, just like this, okay? So there's the other end of the quilt binding, and I'm going to take this one and line it right up. Now, because there's a selvage there that may affect my seam, I'm going to move this over just that maybe quarter inch. There's not that much. I just don't want that, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? I want to call it the binding, the selvage on the other end to interfere with my seam. So all I do is this. Let me roll it over the other way so you can see the contrast. So I allowed a little bit here. If you don't have a selvage, just line this right up with that edge. That, you know, either way works fine. And then what I'm going to do is draw a line right here. So that way I know that's where I'm going to cut my uh, binding. Now, the other method you can use is actually you can do it with it folded just like this. And we've got our pieces lined up. You can take your ruler and do the same thing. So I have a, happen to have a two and a half inch ruler, which is very handy. And I'll put it right on the inside. And then I measure and I get the same two and a half. Now, this is great if you always use a two and a half inch binding. Sometimes if you use a different size for whatever reason, then by using the opposite end of your binding strip, you should get an exact measurement. So at this point, I'm just going to cut this right off and then I'm good to get started. So let me, whoops, I bumped the camera. So let me go ahead and cut this just like that. Oops, I didn't get all those threads. And so I have my extra binding that'll go in my scrap pile. And now I'm going to put these two together. I do want to show you one other little trick when you have your binding cut, just to make sure. Um, one of the ways to double check that you're right on is you take this open piece and fold it over from that corner keeping that edge straight because this is a seam you're going to take and you see that edge lines up right where that selvage is so i know that i'm going to get a good seam now before i get started i am going to cut that selvage off I don't want to forget about, whoops, I didn't get a very good cut there. I don't want to forget about it along the way and then have my binding be too long. Okay, so we have two pieces and they're both, let me move this up here. There we go. And they're both folded. So I'm going to take this one first and lay it out flat. Now, one thing you'll find when you're doing this is sometimes the quilt can get in the way because as you're pulling this piece over, your quilt is heavier than the binding and it wants to kind of pull things. So take just a little little pinch of your, your quilt and stick a pin in there so that you're folding it over and you're, you're just sort of creating a shorter distance there so you have more to work, more room to work with your binding. So we have them folded like this. And I'm being very meticulous in how I do this because <laughs> the last time on the last video that I was doing a binding, I actually twisted this. It was a great opportunity to show how not to do it, but I'm, I'm going to attempt not to do it this time because that's one of the most common mistakes is getting this piece turned the wrong way. So let's, let's start from here again. We have our, our, our two pieces, they're overlapping, they're folded. We're going to take this piece and lay it flat like this. Okay, then we're going to take this one and you're going to turn it this way. 
so that you have your 90 degrees. And we're going to line it up end to end, and then I'm going to sew it from corner to corner. So let me go ahead and get this set up. My fabric squares, my binding, our, our uh, strips are lined up. And I say square because essentially I'm creating a square right here. Um, that's the way I visually see it when I do it, is I have this square and I'm going corner to corner. And I usually let a little, maybe an eighth of an inch overhang. And that way I can see the end here where I'm going. But it also makes sure that my binding is going to be nice and snug. Just like that. Because I don't want to have the binding loose that I have to, you know, try and ease it all in. I want it to fit nice and snug. So let's go ahead and get that trimmed. Now, before you cut this, always make sure that you stretch your binding and quilt out. Let me see. Oh, that's right. The pin is in there. <laughs> Why won't this work? Pull the pin out first, then stretch your binding out to make sure that it lays flat. And you can see how that lines up really well. And so now I'm going to cut this out and uh, trim off my seam allowance without cutting anything else, of course. Be real careful. And save that for a future half square triangle project. I think I'm saving them. Will I ever do it? I don't know. But there may come a time when I'm bored one day and I just make a gazillion of these. At least they'll all be pre-cut. Okay, so here we are. And now I'm just going to sew a straight stitch. With my binding all attached and sewn together and ready to go, I'm going to come to my first corner. And you see how this opens out and you're just going to fold it over like that. And see how we get that great miter? Well, we want to do the same on the back. So what we're going to do is the first thing when I roll it over is I finger press. And I will go ahead and use my thumb and finger, use my thumb on top, finger on the bottom, and I will just sort of pull this out. I'm holding it up here so that I can draw the fabric down, and then that just allows it to lay much flatter and it's easier to maneuver. And then I'm going to take this fold and put it on top of the stitching. I want to cover that stitching as I go. And I pull this straight all the way up, and then I'm just going to turn it over and start sewing. Now, I, I use a decorative stitch. It's You can call it a blanket stitch or a buttonhole stitch. I sort of use the name um, interchangeably. But it sews a couple stitches down and then it, it, you know, sews sideways. So it's nice because it really grips the binding well. And I, I just like the look of it. Now, when you're folding it over, you want to make sure you cover the stitches that are underneath. And you can double check on the front that that's the case because you can feel right along that seam and there's that folded edge. It's right there. It's right on the edge. There's not a lot there. And you can choose what works for you if you want to fold it over a little more and uh, have a bit more to work with. Now, the other thing I do is I don't sew in the ditch. I sew just to the side of it. For some reason, it's much easier for me to sew next to a seam than in the seam. So what works well, I'm just going to move my presser foot here. I line this open toe of my presser foot right along that edge. And what that does is it gives me a nice even stitch all the way through so that this stitch that I'm putting in will be consistent from that folded edge. And it's just, it gives it that little extra of a extra bit of a finished look. So I'm going to go ahead and just let my, there we go, we get that first one in. Oh, sometimes it gets stuck because there's a bit of a lump there. There we go. So I'll only take a stitch or two the first, for the first, you know, setup. And then I'll come through and again, I'm, I'm pressing, hand pressing my seam and uh, just make sure everything's covered, fold it over, and make sure I can 
feel the fold right there and I'm just going to go ahead and sew keeping that presser foot right there along that edge. And that's all there is to it. So I'm going to go ahead and sew down to the other end all 80 plus inches, oh my goodness, and then I will show you how we turn a corner. And I'll also give you a chance to take a look at the back. I can't really turn this over far enough at this point for you to see much. So there we are. All right, I'll catch up with you in a few minutes. I'm coming up to the corner and I want to just fold this little bit over. And I gave myself maybe three inches. You might want to do a bit more because it's pretty snug here. But what I want to show you is how easily this is going to lay into your uh, miter. Now this is where the seam was and so it wants to buckle a bit there and if I just pull that with my fingernail it sort of gets everything where it needs to go. But there isn't certainly isn't anything that's going to be problematic or noticeable. So I fold this over and I want to make sure it goes past the seam underneath, past the stitching line. And then I'm going to put a pin in right there to hold it in place. And I'm going to come through here. And then I want to make sure the pin holds it right at the very edge. Just push that through so you see how I take it down at that point so it's going to hold it right where it needs to be while I'm stitching it. Now the other thing I'm going to do is sew this fold down because I'm going to, whoops, excuse me, I'm going to stitch up here, turn, and come over. So I want this to all be in place. Now I've got to you loose threads that I can just tuck right in there. When I turn my corner, I can very easily just lift this up and bring it over. But you may find that you don't get a very good miter. It doesn't lay nice and at a 90 degree angle. It sort of folds, it may come up short. So what I'll do is with this folded over right where I want it, I'm going to put this pin into the fold and see how I'm pushing it down so that it's pushing that that fabric into the corner and it's going to keep this folded right where it needs to be. If it's a little easier for you, just finger press that fold and that's what's going to come down right here. There we go. I'm holding my breath as I do it. And then if it needs to come down just a little more, grab it with your pin right there in the fold and just bring it down where it needs to be just like that and now I'm going to hold everything and pin this right in place and let me I can't quite get enough room okay next time I need to leave a little more space I got in pretty close there and it's hard to do this and show you. Okay, but what's important is that this corner is where I, it needs to lay when I sew it because these pins are going to hold it right where it needs to be. So you can see that we have the fold there. It's on the opposite side of the fold here. So this is going to lay nice and flat. And I'm going to sew up here and turn the corner. Laying my fabric back down, and I'll just sort of tuck this in so it lays where it needs to be. And I want to make sure this is nice and flat, that nothing is bunched up or scrunched or wrinkled. And I'm going to continue sewing right to uh, the corner, but just beyond the corner, because I want to be able to come down on the edge that I'm going to be sewing. And I will slow down as I get closer. I'll take my pin partially out just so I can grab it when I need it. But I just want to make sure I get right up in there into the corner. And as I get close to the pin, I'll pull it out. But I want to hold it right until I get to that point. Now I'm going to sew beyond. And sometimes this can be thick enough that it may cause your 
foot to kind of get stuck and not want to go over it. Plus, remember, this is where I have the seam. So I'm going to go ahead and just give this a little tug as I go. And then now I'm going to turn. So I've come across, and you can see now how this stitch looks. I really like the look of it, and it works great on the back. See how lining it up along that edge, it gives me a nice straight seam there. So it really is a great finish. Now, doing it by hand is nice too, and if you can, you know, do it quickly, um, I find it takes me a lot longer to do it by hand. There are those that are fast hand sewers, and I'm just not. I've done a lot of needlework over the years, but I was never quick, apparently. Okay, so I'm going to just start coming down this side, and I'm going to go slow because I don't want to run into that pin, and I don't want to push anything around that I cause it to be shifting one way or the other. And there we go. Let me just sew down a bit. Now that I've sewn down a few inches, I can show you how this turned out. So here's the front side, and you can see the stitching just goes right along that edge. And here it is on the back, and it looks great. I love how this all works. It's a wonderful method for doing your binding, and I think you'll find it pretty easy to do. It just takes a little bit of uh, getting through and practicing, but once you've got it down, it's not difficult at all. So let me go ahead and finish this quilt, and we're done. I love it. It turned out so pretty. I love all the different colors, the way it's mixed together, and that chevron just makes such a dynamic statement. Now, I know you can't see a lot of the quilting in some of the lighter colors, you can, but it works out really well, and I'm going to go ahead and do some up-close photos for you to take a look at. But this is just a great way to quilt any kind of a, a small square quilt, or a straight seam quilt, or half square triangle, or there's just so many, so many uh, ways you can use this. I really like this, and you've seen me use this kind of a pattern quite a bit. So let me get an up-close shot for you to see. Here's a view of some good quilting stitching here, and you can just sort of follow along and see where it goes. I like it because it doesn't stand out. This quilt is about the color and the triangles and the big chevron pattern. So the cool thing just needs to recede into the background, which is exactly what it does. But I have another couple close-up shots. Let me show you. This is a really good visual on this one. And I just, I like that variegated green. It just works with the colors so well. And see, as you get away, when you're looking up close, you can see it, but as you move away from it, it just blends in. And I love it. It just turned out so pretty. Okay, one more. I just have to show you. Sorry, this one came out a little fuzzy, but again, just look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. I love this quilt. I think this has been a great success, and I hope you give it a try. You'll love the walking foot quilting. It is such an easy way to quilt, and this pattern is perfect. All right, we've done it. A quilt finished, an 80-inch quilt on my domestic machine. You can do it too. Thanks so much for being here. It's always a pleasure. It's been such a fun quilt to make together. Have a fabulous day.